This is called a dimensions question. A dimensions question. In the following tables, S, T, U, S, T and U are lengths. Put a tick in the appropriate column to show if the expression, these are called expressions, to show if the expression can be used for length or for an area or for a volume or in fact be an utter nonsense and not used for any of them. Now I'm going to start with the bottom one because I think it's the easiest one to appreciate. If you multiply three lengths together, S times T times U, length times length times length, you end up with a volume. Another way of looking at it is a length times a length times a length is one dimension times one dimension times one dimension, which ends up as three dimensional, which is volume. So you can either think of it as length times length times length equals volume, or one dimension times one dimension times one dimension is three dimensional, which is volume. Let's look at the one above it. S times T in itself is an area. A length times a length is an area. Or one dimension times one dimension is two dimension, which is an area. T times U, length times length, is an area. S times U, length times length, is an area. So in fact we've got in this expression an area added to an area added to an area which is just a bigger area. Area plus area plus area is just another area. Now the top one here. T times U is an area and length S is a length. We're trying to add a one-dimensional piece of information to a two-dimensional piece of information. A length to an area, which is just a nonsense. It can't be done. So in answer to this question, it's none of these. A length added to an area, if you try and add a dimension to a different dimension, it's just a nonsense and you can't do it mathematically. So therefore, none of these. Let's see how the marking goes with that, shall we? Well, it's very straightforward, I think. You'll find one mark for each particular question correct. But I'd like to point out something extremely important. If you get a question like this, and this one is one of the most straightforward I've ever seen, they're usually a bit harder than this. And usually there's more than three options. There's usually maybe about five options. And you get one mark for each correct, but minus one mark for each one wrong. So don't ever guess on a dimensions type question. If you're sure of an answer, fine. So let's suppose I was sure of two of these answers. I get two marks for getting them both right. But if I guessed the third one and I got it wrong, then I'd actually only end up with one mark. So I'm saying, in this type of question, you are likely to get more marks for just answering the ones you're sure of and leaving it at that, rather than answering the ones you're sure of and having a guess at the last part of the question. You'd lose a mark and end up with less marks than if you'd left it alone. I hope that makes sense. But this was actually quite a straightforward one. I hope you agree. Right, question nine. Now, there's nowhere near the whole question on this sheet of paper. So do have a look at the exam paper itself and have a read. Mrs Plum is going to open a fast food, fast food takeaway. She wants to know what type of, uh, what type she should open, and wants to design a questionnaire to help her make a decision. Decide, design a suitable questionnaire. Sorry, a suitable question for her questionnaire. Right, we're designing one question for her questionnaire. Now, with this type of exam question don't try and be too clever keep it as simple as you possibly can 
the simpler the better, the more likely you're going to get it right. So a nice simple question. And also it's better to include a question where you have an option of answers. At least four boxes, possibly five, but at least four. So make it simple. Don't try and get a clever question. Just quite simply, which of the following takeaways would you like to see opened? And so you could have fish and chips, pizza, Chinese, Mexican. And the last box is always very useful to have other. So a nice, simple question, nothing clever, nothing fancy. Which of the following takeaways, I'm going to run out of space, so I'll have to abbreviate this, takeaways uh, would you like in the area, in this area? Which of the following takeaways would you like in this area? And then give a choice of answers, at least four, and make one of the boxes and other. You could have a, another box that says none at all, I suppose. But the main point, I'll say it again, is don't be clever with your question. Keep it simple. Right, the question goes on to say, she does ask a few friends. More people like beef burgers and hot dogs, don't they? This is not a good way to find out the better of the two takeaway foods. This is not the best way to find out if beef burgers are better than hot dogs or hot dogs are better than beef burgers. Write down two reasons why it's not a good way to find out about the best type of food. It's not a good question at all. Why? Now there are several reasons, but you're only asked for two reasons. So let's... Let me just put down a couple of reasons in. So one reason this question is very, very biased. If you said that to somebody, you really are saying to them, beef bar burgers, people like beef burgers better than hot dogs, don't they? Um, so you're actually given the answer that you want. So it's a biased question. Another um, is, there's only two choices which is far too limited. Another one is, you're only asking a few people. So it's not a very large survey. Survey too small. T survey too small. Um, four, you're only asking friends. So it is likely that if you only ask friends, then they'll likely have the same uh, food tastes as you do. By the way, I'm not suggesting you answer in one word. You should answer with a full sentence, not just one word. I'm doing that to save space because I haven't got much space. So you do need a full sentence. It is a very biased question. Too few choices with only two choices. A very small survey, only a few people being asked. Only friends being asked, it's likely they have the same tastes. But you only have two reasons anyway, so you won't get any extra marks for writing more than two reasons. So again, don't try and be clever. Keep your answers to this sort of question simple and direct to the point. Right, so we've got one mark for the question and one mark for showing the choices. And quite obviously, one mark for each reason, as long as they're two good reasons. And two sensible reasons. That's question nine. 